Uh, today we're going to be talking about a uniquely South African species, something that a lot of people have targeted, a lot of people go through the sort of the motions of targeting, but not a, not a lot of had success, especially catching the bigger versions. This is the white stenbrus, I was known as Lithognathus, Lithognathus. So litho comes from rock, nathus, teeth, uh, jaws kind of thing. Um, yeah, don't ask me where that comes from, but anyway. It's also known as the pig nose grunter, and that comes from the snouted area. So the white stenbrus is very, very similar to a grunter, or that whole grunter sort of um, group of fish. They've got quite an elongated face, um, very stock standard fish type uh, body, fairly elongated, not, not very chunky. Um, they've got a mother of pearl sheen on them, beautiful, beautiful fish, very shiny, nice big scales on them. And then they've got these black lines or sort of bars on them, um, especially when they, a lot of fish have this ability to, to when they get, I don't want to say feisty, but when they sort of fired up they can they can make their colors go a lot darker and these bars can appear a lot darker when the fish is sort of in a feeding mood or or being chased or things like that it's almost like a zebra type setup now that uh, that mouth of this is designed specifically to blow organisms out of holes and to to root in mud and things like that so that's where it gets that pig nose grunt from it's got a pig type nose even though it's not flat now as we mentioned rooting in the, the mud and the sediment. They can actually project its mouth out to it to a certain degree. And it's got very, very strong gill plates that it can, as soon as thing, if you've ever been to your, your Omar's house um, and you go look at the fireplace, you get that little thing, it's got two handles on it, the little pipey out the front. You wonder what the hell that's for. That's pretty much a pig nose grunter. It's for blowing air in a concentrated stream. So this obviously is water, forces its gills together, blows the water out into the, into the wherever it's uh, feeding that dislodges any organisms that are there and then it can go and pick them up off the top. It's actually a very, very clever system. Uh, the grunter does exactly the same thing. Now, where are you going to find them? Pretty much Durban is kind of the maximum northern uh, boundary and then all the way down up onto the west coast. Um, they, as you mentioned, feeding really on your natural organisms, stuff that are living in the sand. So your sea lice, your crabs, your marine worms are the absolute favorite and then any of your shrimps and things like that are going to be picked off off the bottom um, they really like shallow water they've got a very prominent the early phases of their life are very prominent in estuaries so where we get marine pollution and things like that going into estuaries that's often why we get reduced numbers of these fish so it's the same as grunt as soon as your estuaries go and get buggered up then it affects the population because their juveniles don't get time to grow um, yeah, we mentioned diet in terms of targeting them. Um, obviously, in estuaries, you're going to be using the natural bait that's available. So, cracker shrimp, mud prawn, um, smaller crabs, the little swimming crabs are very, very good for them as well. Um, and use as light a tackle as possible. They are very, very keen. They're very sensitive. They, they can pick out whether you're using 12 pound instead of 8 pound nylon. Um, and they're obviously going to go for the more finesse presentations. For them, a uh, little circle look, the same as we use Grunter in our harbors up this side. A little circle look, just hook through the tail of uh, the cracker shrimp, flicked out even on a, if you can put a, just a little lead shot or free swimming completely, um, gives you a lot better chance of, of actually getting the bite. Now, fighting them, they, they've got their nickname called uh, Steam Train, and it's really, it really comes from their fighting ability. They've got a very, very big, powerful tail. They're used to operating in shallow water, so that tail helps them to, to move quickly, even in strong surges and things like that. So when he takes off, he goes. He goes like a steam train. A, a big individual will take a good 100, 150, maybe even more. Um, people have been stripped by them before, so they are very, very powerful fish. Um, very good eating, inclined to keep fish. Um, very good to catch. You can pretty much do them any way you want, grilled, fried, fried, anything. Uh, your maximum size is around about a meter, um, and that's a fish that can be, that, oh, I'd say about 25 kilos is going to be the sort of the real upper end of, of a, a good, good catch. Um, normally they're going to be in the estuaries up to about 5 kilos, and then in the surf anywhere from that 5 upwards. Your 
spawning time for them is during June to August, that kind of late winter um, type of time. And yeah, let's see. I think that's pretty much pretty much it on the on the lithognathus lithognathus. They are beautiful fish, very very pretty fish. One definitely on your species list you have to have if you haven't caught one yet. Um, the power of the uh, of them, especially in shallow water, is just very very difficult to compare to anything. So the the nickname Steam Train is really well earned, and yeah, it's a species that's very nice to target on your light tackle, even your ultralight if you're in the harbors and the and the estuaries. And, and yeah, why's generous?